Welcome everyone on this Trinity Sunday. Welcome on behalf of the Merivale Fallowfield Pastoral Charge. We are a vibrant, theologically progressive Christian church. Every Sunday we join our hearts together to pursue the teachings of Jesus and to worship a God who is bigger than we can know or comprehend. We believe that coming together in community to worship God helps us live more deeply the commandment to love our neighbor. Worshiping God attunes us to the great mystery that resides both at the heart of the universe and deep within our souls. Our pastoral charge would like to thank all who participate in the weekly services. We know this is done through love and we appreciate the dedication to our pastoral charge. It is the spirit working through people that brings comfort to so many folks who are missing worshiping in the sanctuary. And so, thank you to all who contribute their time and talent so that we can continue to worship online. If you would like to participate in any of the upcoming services, please get in touch with us through the church email. We remain committed to many charitable organizations that need donations at this time of year. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, Auto Emission and the local food banks are just a few that need your generosity during these difficult times. You can find a list of these community places on our website. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurch at belmet.ca or you can send a check to either Merivale or Fallowfield Church. You can find each address on our website www www.merivalefallowfield.org. These are all the announcements at this time, and so we hope that you will enjoy the worship service as we celebrate the mystery of Trinity. Lighting of the Christ Candle. Our faith tradition is one that embraces the mystery and wonder of our relationship with God. Today on this Trinity Sunday, the mystery of our faith is expressed through the belief in God as creator, father, mother, source of all being. It is expressed through the belief in Jesus the Son, redeemer, teacher, and friend. Our faith is also expressed through the belief in the Holy Spirit, sustainer, guide, wisdom, God as three in one. This morning we light the Christ candle in honor of the gift of diversity found in and through the image of God. Amen.
would you please join me in prayer? Gracious and wonderful God, we come this morning entering your gates with thanksgiving and praise. And we know that you are with us and you know all that we carry in our hearts. You are the God of our lived experience. And our experience of you has taught us that you walk beside us throughout every day. We thank you for the gift of covenant, the covenant that we have inherited from our ancestors. In this morning, we are ready to hear your spirit speak to us. So help us to hear you as you reveal to us the path we are called to follow. Enlighten and empower us to share the good news of your love and compassion with all people we meet. Enlighten and enable our congregations to be the source of welcome and acceptance of all people who come seeking refuge from a troubled world. You are the God of all that is good and there is nothing that is impossible for you. And by faith, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And hear us as we offer up the ancient prayer of our ancestors. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This reading is from Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Herein lies wisdom.
Hello there. This reading is from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 17 and it's entitled Nicodemus visits Jesus. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we've seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Herein lies good news. Praise be to Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. Good stories always teach us something in a way that is memorable. And I don't know if you have ever noticed, but compared to the other Gospel writers, the author of the Gospel of John goes into great detail when trying to get his message across to the people. And he succeeds in getting his message across by writing long and elaborate stories. Stories that stick with us. Stories like the one we read this morning about Nicodemus. As well as writing good stories, the author of John wrote great first lines that hook us right into the story. And for those who read the Bible on a regular basis, there are some first lines that jump right into the plot, like the story of Nicodemus. It starts with, Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night. Right away we are hooked and filled with questions. 
why was it important for John to tell us that Nicodemus was not only a leader, but a Pharisee, and that he was coming to see Jesus at night? First of all, we need to understand that the Pharisees were a party representing the religious views and practices of the Jewish people during the time of the temple. And they were scrupulous observers of the law and formed a league or brotherhood of their own, admitting only those who pledged themselves to the strict observance of Levitical purity. The aim and object of the law, according to the Pharisee principles, was the training of man to a full realization of his responsibility to God and to the consecration of life by the performance of its manifold duties. According to the historian Josephus, the Pharisees were extremely virtuous and sober and as despising luxuries. So for me, Nicodemus represents not only a rigid way of thinking about laws, traditions, and rituals, but also about the basic love of God for all of humanity. In our story, Jesus seems to be dumbfounded that Nicodemus could be such a wise and trusted leader and teacher, and yet not know the inner workings of God's spirit, and not know the inclusiveness of God's love. At first, Nicodemus' head seems to be so full of his own thoughts that he can't hear what Jesus is saying to him about God's unconditional love for humanity. Through several attempts, Jesus tries to explain the kingdom of God to Nicodemus. And he tells him there is a way to not only see the kingdom of God, but to enter into it. You can live in the kingdom of God right here on earth, right now, if you want to. But there is a catch. You have to put the love of God and humanity and creation before your rigid religious laws and doctrine. You can only live in the kingdom of God if you live with the spirit of God's love in you. In our story, Jesus wants Nicodemus to really open up and expand his worldview. He says, believe me when I tell you about the love of God, Nicodemus. And I think in a way that was Jesus daring Nicodemus, daring him to turn his mind inside out, be born again and experience the different ways that God has love for all of humanity. I believe Nicodemus was a very sincere and devout person of faith who wanted so badly to understand Jesus. And he wanted to experience this new message of God's radical love he was hearing Jesus talk about. In this story, Jesus basically calls us to realize that we don't know it all and we must be open to seeing the world and all of God's creation in a new way. Jesus knew that Nicodemus's heart was in the right place and that he was earnestly searching and wanted this radically inclusive love that Jesus had for humanity. Jesus needed to stretch Nicodemus' mind to expand his heart and to open him up to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, so he could see that God so loved the whole world and its amazing diversity. In this story, Jesus says we need to be born again. We need to be born of water and spirit if we are to see the kingdom of God, which is right here on earth. Today in the story of Nicodemus, we experience God as creator, the one who offers not just us, but the whole world, his boundless, endless, radical love. The author of John's Gospel also calls us to experience God as Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who infuses our lives with new teachings about our faith and the world. And this story tells us that the God of love is the foundation, the bedrock of the universe. It is the heartbeat of all of creation. 
And we are to experience God through Jesus who explains to Nicodemus that life begins by being born again, by seeing the world through God's eyes. True faith begins when we recognize God's love for the whole world and not just our way of being in it. The story of Nicodemus celebrates the Holy Spirit's power to open us up to a new way of seeing our faith and the world. And through this new lens, our relationship with God takes on a deeper and more complete meaning and helps us to open up and embrace the world and its diversity. The author Mary Jo Letty suggests that we tend to get stuck in our ways and often fail to see the good in other cultures and other faith traditions. In her writings, she says that authentic spirituality arises from a spirit that is open to change and to each other. We can be born again when we open ourselves up to other people's cultures and faith traditions. And we can learn from others and appreciate diversity instead of being afraid of it. By being born from above or by being born of the Spirit, however you want to name it, we can learn to use our faith and belief in Jesus for the good of all humanity and the good of our planet and our universe. This brilliant story by the author of John's Gospel is calling us to live with God's radical compassion and grace. And when we live with compassion and grace, others are lifted up and future generations reap the benefits. Did Nicodemus come to Jesus at night because he was afraid of what people might think of him if he was open to following the teachings of this radical rabbi from Nazareth? Maybe. But may we, as followers of Jesus, always embrace the spirit of God's radically inclusive love and never be afraid to live it in our daily lives. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we know that everything in the world that is good comes from you. And we believe in your great love for all people. And so today we pray that you will help us to live with the radical love of Jesus when we leave this worship service. And we believe that Jesus set out to share with the world your desire for love, freedom, justice, and dignity for all people. And we believe, like Nicodemus, that growth and transformation are possible. We know that the mystery of the Trinity calls us to see the diversity and interconnectedness of your world. Your spirit continues to speak to us of the teachings of Jesus through the Trinity. We believe that you call us to stand up for what is right in the world, and that in doing so, 
you will walk with us in the task of transforming your world into a world where all people are treated with dignity and respect. We believe and have hope in a new day dawning and that you will give us strength to go forward building a just world. Gracious God, it has been a time of great upheaval during COVID. And so we take a moment to rest our joyful or heavy hearts, whichever the case may be, and silently offer up to you our gratitude and our concern. Well, God, we ask blessings upon all who have joined in this worship service, and we pray for peace to the people who, with their love of humanity, create communities and churches where we are able to worship in the spirit of diversity, honesty, and freedom. Amen. May God bless you and protect you. May God deal kindly and graciously with you always. And may God grant you peace. Amen. <laughs>